Hey guys, welcome back to The Binger. Frozen is the phenomenon that just keeps on giving. Although the first movie hit theaters years ago, the hype never stopped. Now that the sequel has been unleashed on the world, things have gotten crazier than a snowman in summer. While it's pure entertainment to us, it's still a job to the cast members. Jobs often come with pesky contracts and lousy coffee, but the less said about that, the better. Stick with us to see what the likes of Kristen Bell and Adina Menzel agreed to when they signed on the dotted line. With any big budget popular feature, there's always a lot of buzz that surrounds it. This is especially true for Disney animated movies, as they're pretty much guaranteed hits. When the first Frozen movie dropped in 2013, the studio knew they were onto something. But no one could have predicted quite how big it would get. At the time, the cast was under strict instructions to keep details about the movie to a minimum. With the second outing, that was reiterated tenfold. The sequel was six years in the making, so Kristen Bell, Adina Menzel, and the rest of the crew had to lock their lips and throw away the key. The trailers did enough teasing to keep us all on our toes, but fans were watching the actors every move. If someone dropped a clangor about the plot, which they never did of course, it would have been a serious breach of contract. As the release date crept up, Disney slowly started to release more information, including the roles that Evan Rachel Wood and Sterling K. Brown would play. Sure, we're adults and we run around and build snowmen with the best of them, but this movie is ultimately aimed at children. Yes, big kids count, but the younger demographic is what makes this franchise so incredibly lucrative. All the cast are required to show a tremendous amount of love to the fans, whether that's by giving them shoutouts on social media or waving from a limousine. At premieres and special events for Frozen, the red carpets and backstage areas are littered with teeny tiny fans. It's only right that the actors go up and show them some love so they keep their spirits up. These are just kids at the end of the day, and if they've hauled their cookies out into the sleet and snow to see Anna and Elsa, the least they deserve is a hug and an autograph. Kristen and Adina have partnered up several times to sing songs for worthy causes, add benefits, etc. Both actresses are notoriously approachable and friendly when meeting their adoring public, too. After all, having Disney princesses acting like the ugly sisters wouldn't do. Kristen Bell and Adina Menzel are the faces of Anna and Elsa. They're so much like the characters that it's hard to imagine the two princesses being played by anyone else. However, they aren't the only actresses to play the characters. In fact, all the characters are played by several people to facilitate the release of the movie in different languages. In the end, Disney wants to reach as many different audiences as possible, so that their animated features become a worldwide phenomenon. It's impossible to find a star that speaks a million different languages, so the role is shared. There's an actress to voice the Mandarin version of the movie, one to voice the Spanish, and so forth. These talented individuals are often left in the background. The main lead actors have to be okay with sharing their characters with other people, but they really don't have a choice in the matter. It's all part of what makes the movie such a success in the first place, so it works out in everyone's favor. One thing we know about the House of Mouse is that it likes its actors to stay in the spotlight and out of the gossip columns. It doesn't always work out, of course. Take, for instance, the likes of Lindsay Lohan but it's certainly preferable, especially when it comes to voice actors. Disney's animated features have always been about wholesome family fun. They're clear-cut, they're purposefully polished, and don't upset the apple cart. It's preferable that the stars of the movie act in a way that reflects that. So if you're suddenly offered a role in one of the biggest animated movies of all time, you better ditch the late-night boozing and pick up a book instead. Scandal and Disney don't go well together. A bad headline or a bad attitude isn't going to help boost box office figures. Who wants to take their kid to see a movie that stars a morally questionable star at the helm? It might seem a little unfair given the modern times we live in, but it's true. Disney stars need to keep their noses clean in every sense of the word. When it comes to Hollywood, it's all about that cash money. A-listers earn it in bucket loads, presumably going home to their mansions and squirreling it away under their mattresses. Kristen Bell and Adina Menzel haven't ever revealed how much they were paid for Frozen, but it's likely to be a few million apiece. This would have gone up a fair bit for the sequel, given the success of the first one. Not everyone on the books were so lucky, though. The actress that played the teenage version of Elsa reportedly got less than $1,000 for her part in the first movie. And that's not all. Josh Gad, the voice of the immeasurably cute and infinitely popular Olaf, has made it clear that he only got a few thousand. 
While talking to David Letterman a few years ago, the actor admitted the studio didn't pay well, despite the movie raking in billions. It's not clear what Gad made for the sequel, but let's hope he got a little more out of the corporate machine this time around. He's not the first to complain about Disney's purse strings either. Oh, and while we're here, don't forget to subscribe to The Binger if you haven't already. Turn on notifications too, so you don't miss a thing. We all know how YouTube can be. If you're on mobile, you can turn these on by going into your settings. Now, on with the show. Whenever an actor is hired for a project, there's always the possibility of a sequel. In live-action movies, changing an actor for the next installment can cause some serious issues as audiences can struggle to accept it. In animated features, things are a little easier, unless you've got some seriously recognizable people behind it. Josh Gad, Kristen Bell, and Adina Menzel all have very specific voices. Not to mention Menzel and Bell's astonishing singing talents as well. When they signed up for the first movie, it's likely that the studio made them aware that they may need to reprise their roles. In some cases, actors have to sign a contract saying they are prepared to come back for round two. In others, it's just widely assumed. Given the amount of time and money Disney spent on bringing Frozen to life, the cast probably knew it wasn't just a one-time thing. That meant they had to keep an eye on their schedules and not plan too far in advance to make sure they could stand to attention if the studio came a-knocking. Luckily, a sequel was probably decided upon way before it was officially announced, giving everyone a prior warning. Making a movie isn't a straightforward thing. With animations, there's a huge storyboarding process that comes into play. It's not unusual for voice actors to be called in last minute to tweak a scene and add lines, or to shoot new scenes altogether. Other segments can be completely cut out, too. That also goes for songs. An actor can put a ton of work into something, only for it to end up on the cutting room floor. They can think it's the best thing since sliced bread or a pivotal part of the movie, but it's all part and parcel of the game. At the end of the day, they have to submit to the creative vision of the director and writers. Getting called into work at the drop of a hat to redo something you've already done is annoying for most of us. For the cast of Frozen, it's just the way things go. Every voice actor knows that they have to be on call during the finishing process, so they're around to do the things that need to be done. That's just the way the cookie crumbles, or should we say that's just the way the snowman melts, kids. Now, writers have their overall plan, but that doesn't mean they won't listen to their stars. As it turns out, Kristen Bell had quite a big part to play in helping develop Anna as a character. When talking at a press event, the Veronica Mars star explained that she grew up loving Disney movies, but never saw a character that represented her. She wanted a princess that tripped up and made a fool out of herself, but that was strong and emotional. By getting involved in the creative process, Bell was able to help craft one of the most popular characters in animated history. She also praised the movie makers for taking the sisters to a higher level of love and development that's all about trust. Bringing a movie to life goes through many different stages, so studios are often willing to listen to any new suggestions. That doesn't necessarily mean that they'll take the advice, but hearing it can't hurt. If there's one thing we know about Frozen, it's that the songs make it what it is. Sure, the storyline helps, but the songs, boy. Imagine a world where Do You Wanna Build a Snowman doesn't exist. What a travesty that would be. Not to mention Let It Go, which became a smash hit all by itself. Kristen and Adina do the lion's share of the singing work, so keeping their voices in good order is paramount. Adina cut her teeth on Broadway, and she's primarily known for her epic range, so it probably comes second nature to her. Kristen, on the other hand, was somewhat of a secret singer up until Frozen was released. Many fans thought her songs were done by another actress, as it's common for Disney to mix it up like that. I didn't know how great a singer she was, her co-star told Yahoo Movies. I quickly found out and need to constantly tell her because she doesn't tell anybody else. She's always playing it down. What's the secret to success? A good plot? A stellar cast and great animators certainly help. But if a movie hasn't been marketed properly, then it's unlikely to get butts in seats. It's all about the advertising, people. Actors aren't just there to play the characters, but to sell the movie. The cast of Frozen have to attend multiple interviews a day, appear on talk shows, radio shows, walk red carpets, do podcasts, you name it. Anything that can add to the hype is a massive yes. What's more, they have to do it with a huge smile on their faces and looking their best. Headache? Take some aspirin. Flu? Pass that Kleenex. There is no bailing out of these gigs. And there you have it. What do you think? 
Are these pretty standard rules, or would you rather go back to flipping burgers? Sound off in the comments below. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.